What is up, down and sideways, all you beautiful people? Welcome to another repi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties, and it is finally time to dive head first into the MSI 2024 preview bonanza. And you got a lot to get through because the tournament's already kicking off a week from now. Oh, it's right around the corner, baby. This is good news for League of Legends fans. We're not waiting a month or longer before we dive in to this international event and that gap between what we've had domestically. We're getting right into this one. Small little breather. Teams make their travel, and it's right to it. Getting going for MSI 2024, and you better believe we got some hype. We got some excitement when we're looking at some of these squads and trying to do our rankings and evaluations. Yeah, we're doing full 12 to 1 of all the squads uh, taking part, including obviously those play in teams and the wildcard squads are where we start things off. And historically, you might not have GAM Esports, the VCS. We've talked about so many times being the top wildcard region. But with all the debacle that they've had off of the rift, GAM's going to have two substitute players coming in. They were beating substituted teams in the finals. It's hard to put them ahead of any of the wildcard regions with all this drama going on. Uh, at least myself, have I've been regularly on the VCS fan bandwagon, talking all about what is going to happen at these international events when the VCS gets there, the VCS teams, and especially squads like the gigabyte marines which we have seen multiple times on the international stage some of these members kiaya in the top lane levi as well very well known names not just in uh, the, the vietnam region but as well internationally because of what they've done how they were able to step up and deliver on the international stage then comes the drop here and the drop here is that well you can't really have any faith or any type of power behind this year's edition of the gigabyte marines because of the substitution situation that they are dealing with. You're going to have a substitution in the mid lane as well as in the bot lane position. And that is where you are expecting to see very high priority positions at this MSI, knowing what type of mid lane talent we are rolling through and the bot lane talent having a substitute, no matter who that substitute is really, no matter what it could be, what type of higher level even you could try and dream of picking as a substitute. I don't think you can just plug and play and drop them in to have that success at a tournament like this MSI will present itself to be. Especially when you're looking at bot lanes uh, for Mr. Easy Love because he's going up against Noah, Route, or potentially Jackie Love for the dream Jackie Love, Easy Love matchup. But either way, he's probably playing against two Koreans. And they are Koreans that are playing at ultra high levels right now, especially somebody like Jackie Love, who is a world champion, of course, already under his belt and has had so many years in the LPL forged in the fire and been at the tip of the spear of the craziness that can happen in those bottom lanes. Yes, this is arguably, I mean, if look, you're looking at Emo in the mid lane, that is certainly going to be a difficult uh, replacement job that he's having to make, but he has stepped in once before for this team. Yes, only once. But what you're talking about with Easy Love, you are staring up at the face of a cliff side, going up against the likes of your boy Jackie Love and the rest of the ADCs that you're facing off against in this, in this pool because you laid them out. Route and Noah, they are certainly no slouches themselves. They might not be a Jackie Love Ultra Pinnacle type of tier, but they are absolutely ones that have got the firepower where if you are off your game, if you are maybe a little bit confused, a little bit uncertain of some things going on with the team or shot calling, whatever type of situation, stepping in as that substitute, you got a lot of pain coming your way from the rest of these squads at MSI. Uh, Jackie Love, obviously not Korean, but he's only going to be matching up against Easy Love if TES drop a series, which seems a little bit unlikely. Uh, ahead of GAM, Astral Esports, fresh off a 3-0 over Rainbow 7, which I feel like is the squad people maybe wanted to see because you had Summit on that roster. But Zoth Bay, the top laner, is absolutely talking trash, spamming emotes throughout these finals. And we get the return of Jose Diodo to the international stage. This is the first fully LATAM roster at MSI since 2021. And Jose Diodo stepping back in. We got FlyQuest back at this event that we always talk about so many the times. Revenge the Revenge Tour. 
The Legend of FlyQuest. Jose Diodo trying to get a little bit of payback against the boys here at MSI. Astral stepping in, what are the expectations? What do you know? Well, from the LCS perspective, you know Jose Diodo. And what has he been doing this year for the squad? He's been doing a lot of the same things that you saw him do in the LCS. That champion pool, more or less the same that we have seen from him in the LCS. You're playing the Poppy, you're playing you know, the Lilia, Ivern, these type of champions getting themselves involved. That's what you got to be prepared against when you know that Jose Diodo is on that other side and what we have seen from Astral so far this year. Yeah, I mean, a 3-0 clean finals makes you feel somewhat confident about them going internationally. Ahead of them is Loud, who had the five-game absolute banger series against Pain Gaming. Uh, obviously, tough draw against Top Esports to kick things off. But when you look at losers here, you're probably getting the Loud Gam rematch from what we've seen internationally. These are the exact same five starters for Loud that we saw at Worlds and... They haven't picked up many wins internationally with this roster, but there's no question you've got faith in especially the solo laners, Robo and Tinos. The classic, El Clasico, the old faithfuls returning for the Brazilian region, loud stepping on through, and yes, led by those solo laners that everybody knows and talks about, Robo and your boy Tinos in the mid lane. How about your boy Croc in the jungle, making some things happen for this squad as well, and Route we've already talked about down in the bottom lane he has certainly been a step up in firepower for this loud squad you mentioned you know where we've been with loud and international events they've kind of they've been around they've been pushing on that barrier for making that next step forward but never getting that crucial win that next level step to push them into that territory and i think at this event that's what your goal has to be. As you said, you're looking at a very tough matchup in that first one, but then you get probably the Gigabyte Marines, and that's where you really need to find that bounce back and dig into that comfort of having been at these events, this experience that a lot of the veterans on this lineup have built up. You have to be feeling comfortable. You have to be feeling familiar at this event to get into that zone, lock in, and bring that best performance that you know that you can bring because this loud squad being down here in these power rankings, this is the ultra conservative spot for them right now because they certainly can ramp up that power. Ever since the VCS has struggled internationally, it's been the PCS and specifically PSG talent stepping into that role as the premier wildcard region squad. They turned things on the last bit of playoffs, 3-0 against Flying Oyster, 3-0 against the SoftBank Hawks from the LJL in the finals. Obviously, Maple and Betty names we're very familiar with, but it's Junjia in the jungle who now has three straight finals MVPs in the PCS and a couple of those obviously with a different mid laner and different bot lane. This guy is the consistent factor. He is going to be the X factor for me when you're talking about PSG talent because I'm going to assume and take for granted at this point that we're gonna get performances from Betty. We're gonna get performances from Maple. Both of these players have been sharp enough through uh, their domestic splits to show that they've still got that level, that talent that we have talked about them at the domestic and at the international level throughout their careers. So expecting that performance to come through, you lay out, Junjia. That is where my X factor lies for this team because I think if he's on point, if he's able to control, he's able to put his influence, his will, out there on Summoner's Rift, it's going to be a very different and very difficult story for their opponents to try and make sure that it's the other team, PSG's Nexus, that is exploding. Junjia, that's my X Factor. Keep an eye on him. Make sure you're prepared about what's going on with him if you are any of these other squads. Still waiting for PSG to take that next step and see... Maybe they are close or approaching that level of either the LCS or the LEC. Speaking of those Western squads, we move to this next tier of power rankings that is full of NA and EU squads. And I know initially people might say Fnatic at the bottom of the Western squads, both FlyQuest and Team Liquid ahead of them, but... Fnatic had some shaky moments pushing through the LEC playoffs, and I think FlyQuest are better than they actually showed in the finals against TL. Yes, I think that's where we're coming through with this type of ranking, this type of prediction at this point, because Fnatic, we have seen those wobbles. We've seen a wheel maybe, you know, slip and slide on that axle, looking like it might come off and the wagon is going to be derailed. 
it didn't go away like that completely. Fnatic kept things mostly together all the way through, even with a couple of those wobbles, a couple of those shakes going around when you're looking at that team and talking about where that firepower is going to be. Razork Humanoid. That is a big one for me. I think you also need to check in on, of course, our Skarin in the top side and what type of progression, what type of uh, you know, power stability he can offer you at this now international level against the type of top lane competition. That is going to be a mega step up and an increase in heat compared to what the LEC normal and regular is. And then you go down to that bottom lane, talking about No Engine and seeing what they have got capable for this Fnatic team because they need to be capable against these other bot lanes that are going to be with them at this international event. Still some uncertainty, still some questions on whether you are going to get that very best of the best from a uh, Fnatic on the day. And that is where squads like FlyQuest, like Team Liquid can swoop on in. I think we're taking the ultra high value of Team Liquid, the one that ro rose all the way to the cream of the crop through that LCS playoffs and did show that there is another angle, another avenue, another level of lethality to this team than what we assumed was the standard for them. And then you move to FlyQuest and we are taking the FlyQuest that we think should show up. Not the FlyQuest that did show up in finals, the one that should have shown up. The power that is the creativity of someone like Whippo and just the raw hunger and pain that someone like Inspire can dish out from the jump. And I think it's a good opportunity for FlyQuest to have to go through play-ins. We're gonna see what the metal of this team is because I think they were surprised by the level and the playstyle that Team Liquid brought in the finals. So let's see, that should be a level up for FlyQuest to say, oh damn, we're actually being tested domestically by LCS team. So we got to look inward, fix some things and sort a whole bunch of stuff out. So I'm hoping, expecting they're at an even better level to kick things off in play-ins than they were getting uh, at times in that playoff run. And then Team Liquid, obviously the big change in playoffs Yawn and APA were getting memed in the regular season and start of the playoffs, ready for them to be benched. But the last three playoff series out of TL, they basically played the best games of their Team Liquid careers. Yeah, and I think the important thing at this international event is, of course, for Team Liquid is checking in on a couple of things. Number one is going to be of APA's champion pool and how he handles himself against the intense level of skill that we have got for these mid laners that are rolling on through for MSI. You think Chovy and Knight are scared of his zigs? Come on. Uh, uh, I'm sure they're certainly not scared of whatever the heck he's going to put in all chat if he's putting anything out there in that territory. I can tell you that much. And then you go down to the bottom lane. We're talking about Jan. I think another guy that is a lot of people forget because we've seen so much of him so young and so early in his career that we are so early in his career and what we can look for and what type of growth is possible. I think this is another one of these events where you got to take some type of a step back and realize what you're going up against. Even if we can throw a Team Liquid where we are kind of in this middle of the pack territory of these MSI rankings, you still got to give a little bit of leeway for someone like Jan to improve and have this type of room for this team this Team Liquid squad, but they're bringing in that other X Factor. Hey, we want to talk about X Factors. Impact in the top side. You're bringing the stability that he represents, not just domestically, but we've seen it internationally, and he's here to dish it out one more time. We've seen him level up at these international events, and when you got the General Umpty leading you, making his oh. international debut, actually got some low but tempered expectations for Team Liquid. Those three teams are cute and fun, but... G2 still runs the West. They're the top dog heading into this. You can talk about, uh, okay, they had some blowout games that they lost, but for the most part, they were the most creative when it came to pick ban. Obviously, all the lane swaps they were doing, and mechanically, they are the kings of the West. Oh, man. How things can always change, and they can always stay the very same. We had unbelievable change through Worlds and NRG making the run all the way through to quarterfinals, and we end up Where's here. NRG? Uh, uh, staying home on vacation, and G2 booking their trips for MSI one more time. Again, yes, this is where it rolls through. Yes, it is talking about Caps and the life type of level up that he represents and what type of challenge he can and has provided for some of these other top Eastern mid laners throughout the course of his career is an important thing to keep track of for this G2 team. And this is all about redemption for them. They've got to get 
that rebound. Got to get back on that horse. Got to prove to these LCK, to these LPL top contending teams that this is your Western threat to be worried about and a true Western threat in G2 to represent and be at that type of level. Uh, these are teams that this Caps, this G2 needs that redemption for their loss to NRG. NRG is not here. G2 is here. They have stayed through the course, stayed through and true to that redemption for their fan base. We'll see if they can cash in on that one at MSI. Only question for me is if Yike can return to some of that 2023 form because he's going to have to against the world-class junglers from the LPL and LCK that he will be matching up against to the surprise of absolutely no one. The final board here, it's all LPL and LCK squads. And really, I think the main point of contention debate on here is going to be that 3-4 spot. Are you putting top esports ahead of T1 or vice versa? We got T1 in three because... Once they lost to Hanwha and went to losers, it seemed like an absolute wake-up call against D-plus and Hanwha Life. They were playing at a whole nother level. And let's not forget, they're one or two team fight losses. Faker ripped Harold plays away from winning game five against Gen G. Oh, you, you just, ha man, it, it had been a couple of days. I week, had to do I it. Sorry, that. Demon King, you know. I had to bring back and now I'm picturing it. Oh, no, that's ugly. <laughs> ugly looks for T1. But what isn't ugly for T1 is claiming this third spot in the power rank. He's getting a little bit of that rep representation recognition ahead of top esports. And I don't think this is meant to be anything against top esports. This should be a recognition of just where and how high up this top four truly is. You're feeling realize. good about both TES and T1. Yes, when you're realizing the top esports is that number four. That is the type of power and type of distance between a five and a four situation. Top esports rolling on through. Jackie Love, I don't think we have seen him at a more deadly, more lethal, more on point level throughout his career than he has been right now alongside Mako in that bottom lane. That one is rolling for top esports as well. Slot in your boy 369 into the top lane. And that is a mega difference maker for this top esports team. But T1, you're right. The rebound in playoffs, the refocusing, resharpen up. That is the T1 squad that is claiming this number three, the one that pushed Gen G to the absolute brink and limits all the way through, where they had to gamble on themselves to get out of that hole. And that's what we're going to talk about when we get to Gen G. But right now for T1, it is absolutely the T1 that is going to bring that intensity, that world championship quality to the table. The question for me off of that even with that rebound for t1 is going to be zeus's performances throughout those series we know that he is an unbelievable talent one of the very best in the world one of the most lethal options in that top side but make no questions he has certainly made his share of mistakes his share of overextends, and they have been punished regularly by some of these top contenders in the lck i expect the very same from guys like 369 we mentioned for the LPL. Wow, 369 and Vin. Like, are you playing TF and Vayne ranged carries only against those two? Uh, well, we've seen the Vayne workout. That is still a risk, of course. We've seen the Vayne workout. But, you know, again, it's one thing when we're talking about just the power level that 369 brings because we've seen 369 versus Zeus before. We've seen Zeus find that edge, even in a tough matchup. It's a little bit different when we're talking about your boy Bin because there ain't a lot of positive memories for almost anybody against Bin in the top side in the last two years. And obviously, to no surprise, the two champs in those top two spots, as we've alluded to, Genji and BLG. Genji takes that two spot. I mean, they had to work a little bit harder in that series against T1 to win. Both of them went through winners, never dropped down to losers. But I think the main reason to have BLG ahead of Gen G is you look at that Elk and On versus Pays Lahens matchup. And that is one, two, three, four check marks going over the way of BLG in that matchup. Uh, screw the ink budget. I'm getting the fifth check mark on that one, man. That is absolutely a mega difference in the bottom lane when you're talking about these two powerhouses. And I think anybody a double lift included when he's going against K-Drill on making BLG. That number one team needs to realize this ain't no LPL bias. This is pure respect for what type of power is dished out by your boys at BLG. The difference that someone like Knight has made to this team in that mid lane, that angle, that wrinkle that he provides and challenge and type of talent that he brings to that mid lane combined 
with what was already established for this BLG team. You got Bin, the best top laner in the world. Ah, uh, yes, I know. Zeus has got that world championship recently. They've been up there all these... You can throw any other type of name in that conversation. It doesn't matter to me. Bin is the most dominant, most talented top laner that we've got in the world operating at this moment right now for BLG. And then you go down to that bottom lane. Elkanon, as you talked about, I think this has been the, the bot lane that has leveled up. I mean, outside of the way that Jackie Love has really roared back into that prime form alongside Mako, outside of that, this has got to be the bot lane that you are identifying in the LPL that has got that heat, that has leveled up compared to where they were last year, right behind the likes of Ruler and Missing. Uh-uh. Stepping into that number one spot now this time as they're rolling on through with the superstar squad. That is BLG as our number one team to watch for MSI. And Elkanon proved that in the TES matchup. They had their way in most of the wins against Jackie Love and Mako, who, as you mentioned, were in fantastic form heading into that. So, yeah, BLG going to be overall tournament favorites. I know Gen G at international events is a meme in itself. I know Pays hasn't looked that good in this playoff run, but Chovy is in the best form. He's maybe ever been. Canyon is finally coming alive with some fun picks. Keen is the best top laner in the LCK when Zeus is in a bit of a slump. And Gen G has the best overall, probably macro and map movements at this whole event. And, and everything we said against BLG and making them number one means nothing about what type of power Gen G is also bringing to the table to slot themselves comfortably in as that number two. Canyon difference maker right away. This is the guy that you brought over from D plus Kia. This is the legend that had built himself that world championship alongside Showmaker, making that bet, that gamble on himself, pushed against the wall with that Kha'Zix difference maker in that game four. It causes the ripple effect in game five. That's how you get the championship, and that's how you get Keen Sante. One week away from things kicking off in China for MSI 2024. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thanks for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip. Thank you.